Hello, welcome to Author Hour. I'm your host, Richard Linton, author of North Korea Deception and Hyde Park Deception. My guest today is Luisa Livorno Ramondo, affectionately known for her, her Italian heritage and nurturing traits, and makes her literary debut this month with Beyond the Cobblestones, a passion project inspired by tales from her mother's journey from the villages of Italy to the bustling cities of America. When she's not writing, Luisa is an award-winning real estate agent who lives locally, but is also known for her natural cooking abilities. Scents of tomato and basil often drift through her home for family and friends for Sunday dinners, experiences from her own youth that have inspired this lively tale. Welcome, Luisa. How Thank are you? Thank you. Thank you, Richard. It's a pleasure to be Thanks here. Thanks for coming. Beyond the Cobblestones. Yes. Great, great title. Thank you. So I was driving here and I was thinking back to the first time I met an Italian family. <laughs> and, and my friend Roberto Sorrentino was like my friend from 12 years old. Very good. <laughs> and I remember the first time I met his family. You know, like when you're a kid and you meet your parents' friends, it's like they're famous. You, yes. want, you, know, you want them to like you. So I'm meeting this little Italian lady. And after about five minutes, she goes, Ricardo, he's a lovely boy. He's always smelling. And she didn't even know me. And, and from that day, I've just loved Italians. Oh, isn't that great? <laughs> so there is something about the Italians. Tell us a little bit about you you know, why you decided to write this book about Italy, your, your mother's journey, your grandparents' journey. Um, where did it all start for you? So it's an interesting story, really. I have always been intrigued by my parents' stories. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad have uh, gone through a lot in their lives to come to the United States. And they grew up and it wasn't easy the way they were raised. So um, my mother would talk about her stories and she would show us pictures. And I would look at those pictures and wonder, how did she ever survive really that way or grow Absolutely. up that way and especially in comparison to how I was growing up in Philadelphia which is you know doesn't compare at all so um, I just was really intrigued by it so about 10 years ago I guess I started to sit down with my parents with my laptop and just type away and record the stories and the timelines and the people involved and really I had no idea why or what I was going to do with it I just wanted to get it down on paper because I knew. So you were sitting with them. Yes, sitting with them. And you just them. said, talk to me, and you're just taking notes. Yes, sitting with them in their kitchen and, you know, drinking some wine or eating some kind of food, whatever they yeah. would usually prepare, and just, you know, kind of getting the history down. And, and you say at one point, I think it's in your, your introduction, you talk about it's like a child tugging at your sleeve or, or something, you use exactly. a fun expression. Mm -hmm. so, so tell us about that. You just, you, at this stage, you were just... You just thought, i got to write. Uh, did you want to write a novel? Did you want to write a story? Did you want it to be like a nonfiction thing? Well, that's a good question, and I didn't know. When I started, honestly, I had no idea where I was going with it. So at first I thought, I'll just record it all for my family, yeah. my cousins, my sister, my brother. Um, and then I thought, maybe I could do a memoir, but then I was frightened by the idea of doing a memoir and getting the facts straight and making sure I didn't offend right. anyone right. and mis right. you know, misrepresent anything. Mm -hmm. So at some point along the line, it just started to turn into a story, uh, a fictional tale, really. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of how that happened. So how, how many pages did you have of notes, would you say? Notes. Hmm. I wrote really, like, typed really small, yeah. so it was probably only about three or four pages okay. typed okay. of okay. notes uh, that I worked with. Okay, and then you started to turn it into a story. Yes. And how, so how long was that next, like, say, first draft? Well, within, like I said, I started 10 years ago with the recording. I probably started writing about eight years ago, mm -hmm. and I got to about 5,000 words and stalled completely. Okay. Because I'm not trained as a writer, right. so I didn't know where to go next or right. what to do. Right. So, um, but I just kept at it a little bit. I was still doing research. And about three years ago, my father and I went to Italy, oh. which was fabulous. We took a trip back for two weeks, he and I together. Uh, we spent a week in the north, a week in the south. And it was just amazing to see everything through his eyes mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, firsthand what he experienced and what my mother experienced. Did you go back to the little village? Yes. And right. I had been there before when I was younger but I didn't look at it the same way as I was looking at it now as an adult trying to write a story. Right, so then, so then is that what, is that journey, that visit, is that what made you think, I've got to get this, finish the story of the novel? Because 5,000 words isn't very much. Right? No, right. So what hap how did you get to the so, 90,000 or 80,000, whatever it is now? It's actually 60,000, okay, so and then, yes. Um, so what I did was I came back from that trip very inspired. I knew who I was, uh -huh. I knew who my parents were, it was uh -huh. great. Stalled a little bit again, life took over. Yep. About a year ago, I was having a, just a bad day. 
and I was hating everything in my life. You know how sometimes yeah, that sure. happens. Yeah. So I did something silly and I Googled career counselors near me mm -hmm. because I thought the easiest thing I could fix if, if things weren't feeling right was maybe work on my career. Mm -hmm. So I called the three that I called the ones that showed up on my Google search. The first one didn't answer the phone. Uh, so I left a message and she never called me back. The second one answered. Her name is Mindy Thomas of Thomas Consulting mm -hmm. and she's out of Media PA, which is local. And uh, we had a great conversation and honestly within the first five minutes she knew what my problem was. And as a result I signed up for uh, four sessions with her. Uh -huh. So during that session she had done all kinds of assessments and, and one of the questions she asked me was, if you could do anything and money was no object, what would you do? And I said I'd finish my book. Okay, great. And she was intrigued because I was talking to her about real estate and, and that part of my life. So she had gone to Georgetown University and she knew of this program that a professor has there that you can get involved with that basically teaches you how to get your idea down to a published novel. Um, and that's what I did. What, and, and so how long did that take, that process? Another few months? So that was, uh, so I started immediately. It was about September of last year, 2020, when I had contacted that woman and she hooked me up with Georgetown and uh, I was actually able to publish within a year, a year later. Wow, wow, so that's, that's pretty fast. That's it fantastic. Was, it was incredible. And I mean, I have to say, it's just, I mean, I love, like, I love, well, I love a lot of things, right? <laughs> I love the fact that you have this wonderful little bookmark that, that you sent with this. <laughs> Thank um, you. I love the, the feel of the book, the picture of the book. Um, tell us about finding the publisher, and I definitely also want to talk about the cover. I love, for example, I don't know whether you can see this, but, um, there's a beautiful cover which is your own photograph and you've highlighted the blue dress of your is it your your my mo mother your, your mm -hmm. mother that's my mother and and it just looks it just looks um it just looks fantastic um but tell us how you found the public so you finished your novel this is only so about it, 6 months ago then really it was and actually it was it was a complete program with uh Creator Institute is the name of it, oh, and the professor's at Georgetown, but he oh. runs this Creator Institute. Uh -huh. And um, at the, you know, you you start off with a developmental editor, which right. was fabulous because I didn't know how to write. Okay. So, um, so that person had kind of led me through the process of creating a first draft manuscript, which I got to from September to about January, February, I was at about 30,000 words. Okay. Then you uh, are switched over to the publisher, and right. it's New Degree Press, and it's part of all part of the program. Mm -hmm. So they're all kind of connected to each other. Yeah. And New Degree Press then had another whole bunch of editors. We had, you know, uh, probably six editors go through that wow. manuscript and look at different things, and also help me add more to it and make it a, a better novel overall. And then I got, like I said, to about sixty thousand words. So, so this is really interesting. I, I honestly haven't really heard of this kind of way of doing it, and mm -hmm. it's fascinating because it just goes to show that there's so many different ways to skin a cat, as they say, and get the finished article done. So, so, so then you had. So, how many editors did you work with at New Degree Press? Probably six. So six different. So how come so many? Because they, I think they really just do it from a quality perspective. Mm -hmm. So they have an acquiring editor who goes through the entire manuscript first to just see if the flow makes sense and what what needs work and what, you know, chapter by chapter they yeah. give you notes. Yeah. Uh, then there are wow. copy editors, and there are. Um, I had a, man, uh, a marketing and revisions editor. Wow. Then I had a, uh, a cover editor. Yeah. And I can't even remember all the others. Let's talk, let's talk <laughs> about the cover amazing. real quickly. Yeah. So uh, again, simplicity. This blue theme, which which you will see at the end of the show on your website. I like the blue theme, of, and I don't know why it works, but it just works. <laughs> Do, can you tell me? How you obviously you wanted to use this picture, or you, or were there were there lots of ideas? Tell us about how you chose the cover and that blue theme that struck me. So it's an interesting story too about the cover. Actually, that was my son Jordan's idea. He's my uh -huh. youngest son, okay. and uh, he how just. Is he? How, How old is he He's now? 17. Okay. He's almost 18. Mm -hmm. And um, and he thought, he knew of this picture because that was always my inspiration. This right. picture has been my inspiration per, for my whole life. Love it. And um, he said, you know, Mom, you really should put that on the cover and, and make Nana in color. And <sighs> Nana is what we call my mom. Yeah. So I thought, oh, wow, that's such a great idea. And then just the sky was just a little extra color to kind of to make it jump out a little bit more. But 
That was all so on So that was your idea, idea and your son's it idea? It was Jordan's idea. And then uh, what I did was the cover editors did come up with a few other ideas. Mm -hmm. So I had um, a pre-sale campaign to, to help with the publishing costs. Sure. And all of the individuals who had gotten involved in the pre-sale campaign were able to vote on the cover, oh. which was really fun. So I sent out like a, a, a little... Uh, survey of three different covers okay. and this one actually won. So what so, were the other two covers? The other two were pictures of my mother's face only. Okay. And uh, they were done in two different ways on the cover. So okay. um, it, it, you know, as a, as a young person, I have another picture of her from a, when she was very young. Okay. And, uh, and they didn't feel that it, it felt as good as this one. So how does it feel now when you see your book there? Um, you know, how, how, t tell us how that feels for you because um, you know, it's kind of an interesting journey that you've you've been on in just a year. Very short. Most sure. most people, uh, I think, take longer. I certainly did. But it's like, just tell us about what you feel like it. You know, having done it. Well, I think the journey it, it does feel short, and uh, I mean, if it was longer for me because I started so long ago with the mm -hmm. recording of the information, and mm -hmm. it, and like you said, I have in my author's note, it was gnawing at me. Right. I I knew that if I didn't do this that I would regret it right. so um, I was just fortunate that I googled that woman that day and she got me kick-started and that program really was what got me to the finish line right. and it's hard it's really really hard I would get up at five o'clock in the morning and write two or three hours I'm, epi I'm an episodic writer so I'll write two or three thousand words at once and then I won't write anything for days wow. um, so I would do that at early in the morning before my day would begin with the rest of my life so a couple of hours you would spend on it would you say is that right? Two to three hours in the morning. Um, I would say I did most mornings, and I didn't necessarily get all that writing done then. Sometimes I would use that time for research, just because it is historical fiction. I yeah. would, um, you know, check on some facts about different things that were going on in, at the time that my mother was, you know, moving from southern Italy to northern Italy to the United States. So, having done that, would mm -hmm. you write another book? Absolutely. I'm actually already working on book two. I'm about 10,000 words in now, right. which I okay. feel wow. good about. Yes. And um, with the same program, with the same publisher, and uh, it is a continuation of this story. So, okay. yeah. So, so did, did she, is it sort of more in America? Yes, or if exactly. You, I don't, you don't have to say, but... Um, yeah, I don't want to say too much yeah, because it, 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 there's, yeah. some, there's some twists and turns, but yes. <laughs> I mean, it just struck me, like the very, even the very beginning of the book, like there's, there's death, there's war, like it's this romantic term, this beautiful little Italian village, but like you, I love the way you get great in, right in there with these really, you know, epic themes. Um, and you know, it does strike, <clears throat> it does strike me as, I've always thought about Italy and France, particularly sort of, you know, whether you're talking Provence in France or Italy, you know, Ravenna, Siena, you know, mm -hmm. those beautiful Tuscan hills. You know, we think of it as so beautiful and wonderful. And yet what you do is you kind of, you talk about how, you know, the cobblestones, uh, you know, there's not much sunlight in those little houses and the cobblestones are cold and it's, I mean, the poverty is pretty striking, isn't it, for your, for your mother yes. as you start out. Um, you know, and you also talk about, you know, coming to America. So, so tell us a little bit about, for you, what it means to go from, I mean, it's pretty much sort of rags to riches, really, isn't it? It really is. And I, uh, I explore that a little bit more in my author's note for my second book, the, mm -hmm. the, the fact that, you know, from, in just one generation, Right. We went from that to uh, to living here in the United States in a beautiful area in Philadelphia, you know, the right. suburbs of Philadelphia. Yeah. So it's incredible when you think about how all of that can occur in just one generation. And it really took the determination of my mother who um, spearheaded basically the whole idea. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you, um, you, you, you say, I know you, I read you said you know it's the best it's, America's the best place in the world do you do you still feel that way I always have felt that way and still do mm -hmm. and it, it's hard when you hear so many people or you know things going on with with negativity in the United States mm -hmm. but my mom and dad came here because it was the place to be yeah you know there was opportunity there was education you could work and make money and and really improve your life and right. they've proven that because I look back on on where they came from and where we are now and it's just incredible really right. so um, it is tough being an immigrant I guess for, for them I, I was born in this country but um, my parents and my sister were born there so they they came here and you know they they made it work my right. you know my my parents always uh, really taught taught us that hard work was important and that's what we did and right. I think that's part of that whole immigrant um, you know, uh, idea is that you have to come here and work hard. You yeah. have to prove 
that you have the right to be here. Right. Did you, um, how did you decide um, that you, because you, you write in the first person, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about how you made that decision to write. I think it's present tense, isn't it? Or? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so that's kind of unusual. Mm -hmm. um, tell us how you, you know, when and how did your editors help you decide that? Did you always want it to be about, you know, I, I did this, I did that, I go here, I get the water, etc. No, honestly, when I started writing, it was more in the um, in the past, or, or, or yeah, I guess it was in the past. And the editors actually had me flip it around, and right. and we did it this way because of the guidance, which I think, like I said, has been uh, stellar. Yeah, I think it really works. Mm -hmm. I think it really mm -hmm. works. Especially, especially for for someone who doesn't have the experience. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. What what do you think people are gonna learn from you? I mean, obviously, it's a great story. Um, what do you th what what do you feel that people will you know, take away from reading your book? I think um, the biggest message that I have is that perseverance and hard work are the way to succeed. Things aren't always going to be perfect. Things aren't always going to go the way we mm -hmm. want. Uh, and, and even within my own story of getting to this point where I've published this book, perseverance and hard work was what got me there. And I learned that basically from my parents and their stories. Right. So that's what I, I hope people will get from reading this book. When, when I, when I, you know, sometimes I, I, I sort of look at Amazon and I just see, I see all these authors, all these books. I'm like, what, you know, why am I doing this? Like, you know, what's, it's just so, let someone else do it. What is it, do you think, that, you know, makes us want to write? Um, you know, it's an art form, obviously. But what do you think um, makes us want to write uh, a, a book? <laughs> Definitely passion. Mm -hmm. You have to be passionate about whatever it is you want to write about, and that's and that's how you get through it. Because as you know, it's a hard thing to do. Yeah. Writing a novel is really, really difficult. I didn't even realize how difficult it was going to be <laughs> when I started, and then I was kicking myself and thinking, "What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I can't possibly do this." And I just kept pushing through and and had the guidance, but. It, it was the passion too underneath mm -hmm. all of that to, to get it done and I needed to do it. I just, it just kept, it was always there. Right. Um, and, 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 I, and I agree with that and, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I love waking up and, and, I, and, and going on Amazon. You see how many books you've sold in which country. It's like, that's yes. really satisfying. <laughs> yes. You know, you spent 10 years on a project and, and you know, finally people are reading it. One, one thing that I, one thing that I decided very early on was that I thought, I know that there are people out there that want to read my story. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how I kind of get through the hard times. Mm. I just made that decision. I thought, and, and, it, and it's true, you know, it's not maybe the people you thought were going to read it, but there are definitely people out there. How, what advice would you give to, to a new writer, either someone who wants to write or is in the middle of writing? What, give me, I don't know, one or two or three things, you know, just pieces of advice now that you've done it. So I can say that I was terrified mm -hmm. by uh, the idea of people reading what I was writing. And, um, and it, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever felt that way. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I was very terrified by the whole idea. And, and that's part of what stalled me a little bit, I think, is I just kept doubting myself and doubting the idea that anyone would run, want to read my story. Yeah. And you're right. The people who read it and have commented to me on it are not necessarily the people that I thought mm -hmm. would read it and comment. Um, but it just made me feel so good. And I think mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the, the best thing you can do for yourself if you want to write a book mm -hmm. is to just keep writing, just write, just mm -hmm. keep writing. Don't mm -hmm. edit it while you're writing, just keep writing, get it yeah. all down initially and, and work through those fears. Mm -hmm. Because um, at the end of the day, you always think about like, you know, I've read, I've read a lot of books and I never read a book and said, why would they ever publish this book? Uh -huh. You know, and that's right. true. You don't right. ever read a book and say, this should have never been published. Right. Right. You may like it or not like it, right. But you would never say it should have never been published. Right. So that's why I just like let it go. I thought, you know, this people, this book will resonate with some, mm -hmm. but not with all, and that's okay. Yeah, and I, yeah, I really do want to stress that for, for people. <laughs> you know, if you are writing, it's like you just gotta believe in what you're doing. Your story, whether it's nonfiction or fiction, it, you know, if you ask me, my biggest piece of advice for people now that I've written two books, it's like you just, I just decided. There will be people, whether they're German, Italy, Canada. I mean, they they're just out there. Yes. And they, you know, my happens to be thrillers, and I knew there were people who would read. And lo and behold, I did it. I finished. I did a good job. You know, a sort of a competent job of of publishing the book. And and lo and behold, people are reading it. And I think that's that's a really big thing for people who want to write, uh, <clears throat> you know, themselves. 
Um, the, another thing I was thinking on the way here actually is, is you know how when you read a book and you find a new author, um, I'm always, and, and we all have our platforms and social media and we've got to do all that stuff and a website, right. you know, and I'm always sort of torn between how much do the readers want to know about me and how much do they just want to read my books? How, what do you feel as a, as a reader uh, and as a writer, like how much, how much do you think people want to know about the author or not? I uh, honestly think in, in uh, today's world with social media that people really want to know the person. Yeah. They want to know about you. They want to know how you sit down and write. They want to see pictures of you doing different things. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I, one thing I've learned with social media is that the, the thing that gets the most like likes rather are the, the pictures of you. Of you. Yes. So, so I've noticed like if I post, post pictures with my parents that yeah. I get more activity than if I just post, a, you know, a, a random picture of yeah. a, another book or something like that. Yeah. So um, they do want to know. They want to know about you. They want to know how you got there. They want to know how you did it. Because right. I think at the end of the day, a lot of people feel like it's so hard to write a book and they mm -hmm. wonder how you can get through that process. And learn and telling people how you got through that process, I think, um, is, is something that they want to hear. But even though I, I agree with you, uh, mm -hmm. but I still find myself saying, well, why, what, like, you know, why do you want to know about me? Like why, why can't you, because you know, you get a book and you read the book and you want to get to the next book and there's a series. And I, I still, and, and I agree with you, you know, when you do post pictures of yourself, people you get more, more likes, not that that's important, but right. you know, people want to know. So I, I don't know, I, I'm still, I still get perplexed as to why that is. Don't they just want to read books? Like why do they, it's like actors, I don't really want to know too much about actors like private I don't know maybe it's just me maybe it's just me maybe well, most people are nosier than I am well I don't know if it's I, I feel like it might be a connection thing right so um, I had a hard time with the pre-sale campaign quite okay. honestly so my publisher had um, arranged for me to do the pre-sale campaign where I would basically get people that I know to pre-order my book right and the reason that works is because they're buying me. Right. They're, they know they me. Know. They don't even know what I'm writing. They don't know what they're going to read. They're right. just buying me. And, and that's why I think, and that, that's why it works, because mm -hmm. people want to know about you. They want to make that connection. Right. And if they're already connected to you, it's even better. Yeah. So um, I think, I don't know, I just feel like it's nice to connect to people who wrote the book and, and, and be able to understand where some of those ideas came from, like how your mind works. Did you did you um, did you do a discount price for the pre-sale? No, it was actually thirty nine dollars. And part of yes, what? I know it's interesting. So part what? of that process wow. is this pre-sale campaign where you pre-order the book for thirty nine dollars was was the lowest or level, or maybe fifteen was for an ebook. Yeah. But then it, it went even up higher, so you could have super fans and you oh get multiple. Perks with it, really. You get signed copies, you get numbered copies, wow. you get uh, possible like speaking arrange engagements. Um, oh you get goodness. multiple copies of the book depending on where you are at the at the support level. So it was really an interesting process wow. to help pay for the publishing. And did that so that and you would say that worked for you? It absolutely worked. Not wow. only did it work to help me with the publishing process, but it also worked in creating a, a, a community uh -huh. around my book. Wow. And that's also helped to make it grow because every person that pre-ordered has their own community. Yeah. And then they, you know, they've read it or they've shared it or they've, you know, talked about it with their own friends. And if people want to do this, the thing that you did, how would they find out about that? Because that's not really on your website, is it? Well, no, that was all through the publisher. So, and what, so what's their name again? New Degree Press. New Degree Press. So mm -hmm. if, if that's something you are interested in, you know, New Degree Press, um, it's obviously a, a very different process that I haven't. Yes. Really heard about. So it's yeah. almost like a Kickstarter thing, right? It's like King Completely. Yes. I mean, was it Kickstarter or was it like a? Oh, it was own... Indiegogo. Was okay. The, Indiegogo. Oh, okay. Yeah, because Kickstarter was a different. We yeah. didn't use that one. So Indiegogo, yeah. right? Yeah. So that is a right. How yeah. interesting. Indiegogo. So you put your. The, I had a video that they created for me. Yeah. Um, to kind of in, announce the book and um, and then you know I just put it out there on social media yeah. and again it's your friends and family that are supporting you generally. Yes. Depending on how wide your network of people is, are, you know, is. Um, so I, I was able to do that and, yeah. but from the support of all of my family and friends, which I, I 
I'm so grateful yeah. for because it really I, got me here. Right, and mm -hmm. and I find that like so my my friends and family were really supportive on the first book. I feel, I feel that the second book like I'm milking them a little bit too much now, <laughs> and I realize now it's time to like take off like you're in a plane and you yes. it's now like to fly my you know fly my wings whatever the expression is. Yes, and, and and you have to then go out there and find like you know unknown people who don't know you and just want to read your work. That's but, right. But but again. Just a quick bit of advice, you know, that is that is the route. If you are publishing a book, if you want to write a book, you've got to start with your, say, two to 500 friends and family. That's right. And and that they will give you the support when you start out. Um, and then it's kind of up to you to, to, to find find your readers, right? Find right. people who, who like Which you. Which is what I've been working on now. <laughs> right, right, right. Mm -hmm. um, if you were in that little village, um, mm -hmm. is it Or Orsio? Or Orsada. Orsada. Or Orsada. 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 Mm -hmm. um, Ors Orsada Puglia? Puglia. Puglia. Yeah, Puglia. De Puglia. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you if you had stayed there, say, if you were your mother or you, you know your mother had stayed there, um, what do you think? You know, you would have ended up doing if you'd have hmm. stayed in that area. Like, what do you think? Do you ever think about that? I think about it all the time. I I think about the choices that my mother made and how it affected my life and my sister and brother's lives. And you know, I don't mean any um, disrespect to that town and their way of life because it's beautiful. Yeah. But it's definitely a simpler way of Simple, life, yeah. and it's a little smaller. You know, things are just um, they really just cherish life in a different way a there thing. and uh, and I think I probably I don't know I, I don't know if my spirit would have changed my own path um, but I feel like we could have I could have still been in Italy living a different totally different life but what do you think you would have done like what job <laughs> that's a would good you question have I don't I don't know because there's no real education in that area like you'd have to travel away from there to go to college um, or to get into the schools there, right? Well, they have a school. I mean, now I don't even know how big it is, but they're still not very big. There's no college in that right. town. You're you're going to at least an hour away to where there's um, more university type schools and right. things like that. So it's it's a different it's a different way of living. It's a lot smaller. It's a lot simpler. It's um, you know it's just different from what we're used to here, especially sure. on the east coast of the of the United States. Well, even like you talk about the ladies doing their washing and that was like a fun activity. Yes. And, and, and it's, it is true. And I think one of the things you get from reading this book is, you know, it, it, you, can, you can enjoy life from the simple things, right? Absolutely. It's, it's similar from, you know, my book, North Korea Deception is a lot set in Russia and I lived in Russia and just going to someone's house and eating their food there wasn't any food in the shops, but they somehow managed to get food and you would go and you'd just spend the whole day and you'd sing songs, yes. and, you know, guitar and, 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 you know, Russian folk songs. And, and, and I, I do think that we've lost that here. Um, and I do think that, you know, people, people, you know, will learn uh, from your book uh, about the simple, simple things in life. Well, and I do, I agree with you on that. I think that uh, that's part of being in the United States. Right. You know, people come here from other countries because they want more than what they have. Yeah. And maybe what they have at home isn't necessarily bad. It's not yeah. bad. Yeah. Some, I'm sure, are. But in this situation, it wasn't that it was bad. It just wasn't exactly what my mother envisioned for sure. her life. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, um, thank you so much, um, Louisa, for coming to see us today. Um, you can find out more about Louisa at www.beyondthecobblestones.com. That's www.beyondthecobblestones, all one word, dot com. And um, thank you so much for joining us today. Be good. See, oh, and if you like thrillers, you can also check out my latest release, which is uh, uh, Hyde Park Deception, uh, book two in the Deception series. Uh, be good. See you next time.